Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Museum Munchkins. I'm Mr. Nick, and today we are talking all about this animal right here, the pronghorn. And we're going to start off by singing a pronghorn song. Now, this song is a little bit slower. It's not really like a get up and dance around and wiggle all over the place song. It's more of a quiet calm down song a little bit so we can sort of have a seat right now we don't have to wait until we're done with our song to find a seat and we can sort of dance along with this song and if we know the words to this song already we can maybe sing along at home to this song this song is called home on the range and there's actually a special verse that i added at the end of it just for us today when we're learning about Pronghorns. Are you ready to sing our song? Great. Here we go. <clears throat> this song goes like this. You might have heard it before. It's kind of an old song. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play. Where seldom is heard a discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy all day Home, home on the range Where the deer and the antelope play Where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day oh pronghorns are strong and go leaping along the fields that they call their home their speed and their might is a beautiful sight when they're out on the prairie I roam home home on the range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day all right, thank you so much for listening to that song with me. Have you ever heard that song before? Maybe you have, like I said, it's a very old song. It's over a hundred years old, actually, that song is. And today, we are going, like I said, we are going to be talking all about these animals. And while we're talking about them, if you at home think of a question that you might have about pronghorns, you can write it in the comments of this show while you're watching. And if you're watching this show later, too, um, you can also write your questions in the comments and we'll answer questions even when we're done filming our show today. You can leave your comments in the, question, in, the, uh, in the boxes down below and we'll answer those questions as they come in. Great. So pronghorns are pretty amazing animals and they're the closest relatives in North America as the animal that we learned about last week. Do you remember what animal we talked about last week? We talked about giraffes. So giraffes and their relatives, okapis, which are animals that live in Africa too, are the closest relatives of the pronghorn. Now, when you were listening to that song just a few minutes ago, did you hear us mention pronghorns? So there was that extra special verse at the end that I added into the song, but in the song too, it talked about antelope. And that's another word that we use for pronghorns, even though pronghorns are not antelopes. Antelopes are actually a whole other group of animals, but because they look very similar, or people thought they looked similar to the antelope that live in places like Asia and Africa, when, when explorers um, from Europe came to the United States, came to North America, and they saw these animals for the first time, they just started calling them antelope. But now we know that they're a lot different than actual antelope 
So when you hear people call, say we're going to go out west and we're going to look for some antelope or some pronghorn antelope or the American antelope, those are all other names for this animal here, the pronghorn. Now pronghorns, like I said, are found here in North America. That's where our museum is. So our museum is way over here in Kenosha, Wisconsin, but we find pronghorns in the western part of North America up into Canada, all through the United States over here in the western part of the United States, and down even into northern parts of Mexico is where we find pronghorns. So pronghorns are usually about four to five feet long. They're pretty long animals, pretty big and bulky animals too, and they can stand about four feet tall at their shoulders and weigh up to 150 pounds. So they're kind of bigger animals that we find here um, in North America, and they are herbivores. Have you ever heard that word before? Herbivore. Can you try saying that word with me? Herbivore. An herbivore is an animal that eats plants. So pronghorns are herbivores and they really like to eat grass and shrubs like sage and things and cacti in the warmer, drier places of our country where they live. So depending on where we find them, what environment we find them, or where in North America we find them, there are different plants um, that they like to eat. Maybe some pronghorns eat more grass than other ones, and some eat more shrubs than others, um, but they all like eating those plants, but they eat different ones depending on the environment that we find them in. And we find them all, like I said, all throughout the western part of the United States and Canada and Mexico, and those are all very different places. So whatever plants they can find in those areas, that's what they like to eat. Now, when we look at this pronghorn while we're talking about it, there might be a few different things that we can notice. Let's look at their colors first. When we look at the color of this pronghorn, we see some white on their, on their sort of their bellies and some tannish or lighter brown colors. I see some black and some dark brown on like their nose and on their cheeks and stuff. So we see lots of different colors. Those colors help them to blend in with their surroundings. So in the wide open spaces of Western North America, where there's not a lot of trees, but there's lots of grass and bushes and rocks and things that are out and exposed, those are the places that pronghorn like to live. And so their colors on their bodies match those areas and that helps them to blend in just a little bit. So we can also see when we're looking at this pronghorn that they have one, two eyes, just like we do, one, two. I've got two eyes in my head too. How many eyes do you have? One, two. So pronghorns have two eyes too, but their eyes, my eyes, are on the front of my head. So if I turn my head or to the side like this, I can't see you. I can't see the camera and I, because our eyes point straight forward. So we're really good at looking at things that are right in front of us. But pronghorns, their eyes are on the sides of their head. So that means pronghorns are really good at looking all the way around them, almost all the way around them. They can see all the time because their eyes are really good at watching out for predators, animals that might like to come and find them and eat them. So animals like cougars and wolves and coyotes and sometimes even golden eagles will hunt pronghorn. Golden eagles usually hunt smaller pronghorn though. So, they, so they, they use those eyes to protect them so predators can't sneak up on them so easily. Um, but they have another uh, uh, defense that they can use to escape if a predator happens, does happen to sneak up on them if they don't see them with their eyes. And that's pronghorns are very, very fast. In fact, pronghorns are the fastest land animal in North America and the second fastest land animal in the entire world. The only animal that lives on land that's 
faster than the pronghorn is the African cheetah. So cheetahs can run about 65 miles an hour at their top speed. Pronghorns can run 55 miles at their top speed. That's really fast. That's about as fast as you drive a car on some highways. So they can run a re they can run really, really, really fast. And the reason that scientists think that they could run so fast is because cheetahs used to live here in North America too. So there were American cheetahs that went extinct about 12,000 years ago. So all the predators that are faster than the pronghorns to catch them are extinct now, but not the pronghorns. So other animals like wolves and coyotes, they can still run pretty fast, but not fast enough to catch a pronghorn if it's running as fast as it can. Now, another thing we probably notice on this pronghorn are its pronghorns. So it's got these two things on the top of its head. Now, last week, we talked about ossicones on the head of giraffes. So these aren't exactly ossicones, but they're not horns either. And they're not antlers. In fact, they are a whole other thing um, that, that these animals have on their head. They're called pronghorns. So pronghorns have pronghorns on their head. That's where they get their name from. And they're a whole other thing. They're kind of like a mixture between antlers and horns. So animals that have horns, a horn is bone that's covered with something called keratin. Can you try saying that word with me too? Keratin. So keratin is sort of like the same stuff that our hair and our fingernails are made of. So like the horns on a bull or a cow are kind of, they have bone on the inside and then they're covered with keratin like is on our fingernails. And other animals like deer have antlers. So antlers are things that their body grows every year and then they fall off every year and they regrow them. Well, pronghorns are kind of a mixture of both. So they have some bone that goes up into them, but then these long parts up here grow, fall off and grow back every single year too and get just a little bit bigger every single year. So a pronghorn's pronghorns can grow up to 17 inches long, which is pretty, pretty long for these pronghorns. And boys have the really long pronghorns, but even girl pronghorns can grow them. Theirs are a little bit shorter though, only about six inches, and they don't grow this extra curly prong on the back of their pronghorns. They just kind of have little spikes that stick off the top of their head. Pretty interesting, I think. And I, what else I think is interesting is this story that I brought today about pronghorns. So this is actually a really interesting story that I was reading the other day. It's called Antelope Woman, and it is an Apache folk tale retold and illustrated by Michael Lacapa. And Michael Lacapa, the, the person who wrote this uh, book and illustrated this book, is actually a member of the Apache Nation too. So, here in this valley, the people lived, and among the people was a beautiful woman, a strong worker. She knew how to gather berries early in the morning and how to gather wood for her family. She also knew how to make strong baskets. You see, she was very special. Young men from other villages would come see her and try to get her attention by walking in front of her with their horses, bows and arrows, and colorful shirts and shoes, but they did not interest her. One day, a young man who didn't, was not like the others, other young men, came to the village. He came to talk to all the people in the village. He went to the men, sat down, and began telling them of ways in which to hunt and protect their families. When, he said, when hunting, remember to respect all things great and small. In the evening, he left. 
The next morning, when the young woman got up to gather wood and berries, she saw the young man helping an elderly man make a bow. He said, this is how you make it stronger. And remember, as you hunt with this bow, respect all things great and small. The old man agreed, and the young man, woman too. Later that evening, the young man left the village. No one knew when he left or where he had gone. The next day he returned. The young woman saw him helping a woman carry water from the river. As they walked, the young man told the woman, we must even honor the water, for it flows down from the mountains to nourish the plants. It nourishes our brothers, the animals. It also nourishes us, the people. We must respect all things, great and small. The young woman knew that when the young man left the village that day, she would follow him and watch where he went. As he walked from the village at the end of the day, he knew the young woman had been watching him, and he let her follow. Soon he came to a patch of bushes and trees. There he disappeared. The young woman ran quickly to see where he had gone. Just as she reached the trees, she saw him jump through four hoops. And then something happened. Looking back at her, the young man nodded, but she noticed that he was not a man anymore. He was an antelope. He motioned for her to follow him, and she did. As she began to go through the hoops, one after another, as she jumped through the fourth one, she felt herself change. Then the young man told her, you must come with me. I will teach you so you too can tell the people to honor all things great and small. The young man and woman walked to a pool of deep water. On the far side of the water were more antelope who began talking to the young man in a different language. For you see, they were his people, the antelope. The young woman felt thirsty and began to drink. As she looked into the water, she saw her reflection. She was no longer a woman, but an antelope. The young man said, you must come with me. I will show you why we must be thankful for all things. Then he called to her, come here quickly, quickly. Suddenly all of the antelope were running. They ran until they came to a patch of prickly pear cactus, and then they ran through it. The young woman was surprised to find she could somehow step through the prickly pear without hurting her feet. She looked behind her and saw the coyote who had been chasing them. He looked hungry and angry because he could not get them through the cactus. The young man said to her, See, we must be thankful for the sharp prickly pear because it gives us protection from those who wish to have us. It is good to honor all things great and small. After the coyote left, the young woman was happy and thankful. When the herd began running again, quickly and gracefully, she was thankful that she too could run and jump across the plain, through the high grass and over bushes and small trees. Then she thought of her family. Her family! While learning about things for which to be thankful, she had forgotten her family and her people. She said to the young man, we must return to the people and share this knowledge with them. The young man agreed. The next day they returned through the hoops. They were changed back into people and entered the village. The young man carried with him many gifts, deer hides, jewelry, beads, corn, bows and arrows, and many colorful stones. He brought these gifts for the young woman's family, for he was to marry her. The young woman's mother was excited to see her daughter, for you see, time had passed and the people had been very worried about her. She told her parents that she and the young man were to be married. The family agreed by accepting his gifts. Soon the young couple were married and stayed in the village. The people were happy, for the young man showed them many things that would help them through the long, cold winters and the hot, dry summers. He showed them ways to live and ways to learn. During this time, the young woman became pregnant and gave birth. The young man was proud of his children, a boy and a girl. 
but because they were twins, the people did not accept them. The young couple felt sad and began to talk. The young father said, Remember when we ran together with my family? It was special. You knew at the time it was important to honor the family. Now you must honor our family by going where we will be accepted. We are not like your people, and they do not accept us. Many people will accept us because they have learned how to honor the family and all things great and small. With that, the young mother agreed. She told her parents that she would have to go with her husband to his village. The people watched the young family walk to the place of the four hoops. After the young couple passed through the hoops, they were never seen again. Since then, we have learned to honor all things great and small. So today, my son, we honor the antelope by never hunting or killing them. For out there among the antelope are antelope women and her children, and they are part of us. Now as we hunt, my son, we must be thankful to the Creator who gives us all things great and small and who teaches us to honor them all. That was a pretty interesting story, huh? And it talked all about having respect and honoring each other and other things. I like that message. <clears throat> so today for our activity, we are going to be making some pronghorns. I thought that that would be pretty fun for us to do. And to do that, we're going to need just a few things. We're going to need some tape. We're going to need a stapler, a pair of scissors, two popsicle sticks, or these are tongue depressors, like really big popsicle sticks, and a piece of brown paper, and a piece of black paper. Now I'm going to start off by making a headband that goes around my head to hold the pronghorns onto my head. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my scissors and my brown paper and I'm gonna cut some strips. So I think I might need three strips of this paper to go all the way around my head, but you might not need quite so many strips to make it go all the way around your head. But I think I remember that I need three strips if I want this paper to fit all the way around my head. Cut them out. I've got one, and there's two, and three strips. There we go. Perfect. I've got my three strips now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these and my stapler, and I'm going to overlap them just a little bit like that. And then, then I'm going to staple them together. And then once these are together, I'll be able to use this other strip. I'm going to put that over this one just a little bit too and staple this one on. And now I can stretch this around my head and see where I need to staple these two together in order for my headband to stay on. It looks like right about there. I don't want it to be too tight because I want it to be able to go on and off my head really easily. Let's staple it right there. You might need some help with this part. It can be kind of hard to mark where your headband needs to go and, um, and then hold it and staple it and all that all by yourself. So it's okay if you need a little bit of help with that part. Oh, and while we're making our pronghorns today, let's also answer some pronghorn questions. So Cecilia wants to know, why do pronghorns have horns like that? That's a very good question, Cecilia. So they have pronghorns like that because that's just how they are. So over millions of years, nature has given pronghorns these pronghorns. So they use their pronghorns uh, for mostly for fighting each other or protecting themselves from predators. So boy pronghorns will wrestle around smashing their pronghorns into each other. But they also, like I said, use them for protecting each other. But they also can use them for identifying each other from way off in the distance. If they just see some pronghorns poking up 
uh, above the grass where they're living, they can go, oh, there's some pronghorns over there. I know those. I know those. I'm a pronghorn too. And then they'll know where other pronghorns are. All right, now I'm going to use my black paper too to make some pronghorns for my headband. So I'm going to take my paper and fold it in half like this. And then I kind of need to, I'm going to look at the shape of these, which they're kind of like, they're long and they curl back a little bit like that, almost like a candy cane, but then they have a little spike that sticks out of them too in the front. So since I folded my paper in half, when I cut out my pronghorn shape, I'll have two of the exact same pronghorns when I, un when I unfold them. So I'm going to kind of go up a little bit like this, and then I'm going to curve forward to make my little pronghorn there, and then I'll curve it back, and up, and around, for the prong, the part, the big long part that kind of makes the hook on the candy cane of their prong horns is called the prong. A big prong there and then they're just kind of wide and flat at the bottom so I'm just gonna kind of leave them wide and flat at the bottom like that perfect and now I've got my two prong horns and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tongue depressors and I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna tape those tongue depressors to the back of my prong horns. That is just gonna give them, make them stand up straight a little bit better when I attach them to my headband. So I think I might need two pieces of tape, one on each side of my popsicle stick, on each side of my tongue depressor, like that. And then it'll, they'll stand up nice and straight once I attach them to my headband. for that side, and one for this side. Make sure that tape is on there nice and smooth so it stays on there and my pronghorns don't fall off their popsicle sticks. So now see, it looks like I've got like almost like a mirror image of them, so I, I tape the, the tongue depressors on the inside of both of my pronghorns. And now I can take my headband and I wanna kind of find the middle part on both sides of my headband, which looks like it's gonna be right kind of near where I stapled, which is really handy. So I'm gonna put those on there like that too. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit more tape. You could try to use your stapler here or maybe even some glue to hold the, the tongue depressor to your headband. But I'm gonna use some tape. It can be really hard to push a stapler through a tongue depressor, which is why I'm gonna use some tape. But like I said, you could use some glue too. All right, there's one, and then I'm gonna put this one on the other side too. So I'm gonna need some tape on the other side. It's getting a little wobbly because of that tongue depressor on that one side. So one piece on there. I'm going to use two pieces of tape to hold those on. And two. Here we go. Perfect. And now, when I put my headband on my head, I should have two long prong horns on my head, just like my prong horn here. Awesome. Do you think with I, when I'm wearing these prong horns, it'll make me be able to run really, really fast? Maybe, or maybe today I'll just eat vegetables all day today because now I'm a pronghorn for the day with my pronghorn headband. All right, I hope you guys had so much fun today with me learning all about pronghorns and making some pronghorn headbands for us to wear and reading that story. That was a really fun story too. And I hope that you join us next week when we're gonna be talking about one of something that I'm really afraid of, an animal, an animal that I'm really afraid of called spiders. So I hope you guys join us next week when we learn all about spiders.